Okay. And if we can ask the panelists to come up. Okay, you can start here while they're setting it for you. Yeah. So um, what we will do now uh, is to have a panel discussion on uh, the deployment of Transmart, which I think is one of the crucial success factors of, uh, of Transmart for the, for the year to come. Uh, and fortunately, we do have a very distinguished uh, panel for this. Um, first of all, J.K. Goury, I think all of you know uh, him. Um, um, we've, got, uh, we've got Jay Bergeron, and uh, we've got um, now I a very difficult name from uh, Deloitte, uh, Ran Ranif Narif? Ramin, uh, Ranim. Ah, sorry, sorry about that. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what I will do is I, I will have a few slides uh, to, to set the scene and, and basically um, uh, yeah, try to explain to you why I think this is very crucial for the, um, for the success of, uh, of Transmart. And then uh, we will give the floor to the, to the panel to give their take on it and then we'll open the, the, the floor for the audience to ask questions to this panel. So wh where I'm coming from is the trade project uh, as introduced by, um, by Gerrit yesterday. And um, what we try to do in, in, in trade is support the entire workflow for trans translational research projects. So all the way from the, the patient uh, introduction to the data integration, data analytics, where we select the transmars. And so we have an old, uh, we have an, an, a big tool set that we try to support for these, uh, these scientists, but uh, Transmart, as Gerrit explained yesterday, is really our centerpiece. It's the, the central tool in, uh, in this tool set. Yeah, so, um, and we came to this conclusion pretty early on. Uh, we, uh, we were actually, we hosted one of the, uh, the Transmart annual meetings before it was called that way. Yeah? So it was uh, in Amsterdam uh, somewhere in, in, in the beginning of 2013. And uh, you still see many faces that you see here. Um, but when, when we look at the, the uptake of the tools in, in, in the trade community, you see that some of the tools are highly uh, successful. So Open Clinica, which was nicely introduced by, by Cal in the previous talk. We have 120 studies in, uh, in this, used productively by hundreds of scientists every day nowadays, and we get new stu studies on board every month. Huh? The same in the imaging world, we have um, selected a couple of uh, imaging tools, so MBIA is the largest one uh, there, and we have 25 image collections uh, from studies across the country and across Europe. Uh, but then we go to, to Transmart, and where are we now after nearly two years, so we have two proof of concept installations. So one in colon cancer and one in prostate cancer. And um, so, and that's the focus for me for today. So uh, what can we learn from these successful guys and, uh, and see how we can, uh, can change this? Huh? Because yeah, we all know this, uh, this hype cycle of, um, of Gardner. Uh, so um, we, we, are, uh, we have very high um, uh, expectations from it, but yeah, at some point you get the dissolution. And, and we need to avoid that, or at least uh, come to the slope of enlightenment. Uh, so for me, for me uh, as I look at, at trade specifically and at the community, transmart community in general, I think there are three priorities for 2015. So these are users, users, and more users. So that's really what we need. Huh? And, we, and when, when you have got the users, then the funding is a lot easier to attract. Uh, so uh, both for trade and for the transmart foundation, I, I, I think we have uh, funding for the, for the years to come, but we have to look further and see how we can we really become sustainable. And um, yeah, so that's something we learned from the banks. Eh? So you must make sure that you become really big, then you're too big to fail, and then the funders need to support you. Eh? And that's, that's really the way I look at it. And have, yeah, after this introduction, so I would like to give the floor to the, to the panelists and um, yeah, uh, I would uh, like to ask them to give a quick introduction. So, who are you, your users? How did you get them on board? Uh, what stage are you? So, what are, the, what are your successes? What, uh, what are the lessons learned? So, maybe uh, each of you can, uh, yeah, can make a start with that, and then we can open the floor to the audience for, for further questions. So, uh, who's first, please? Okay, I'll be first. So, first question is, who are you? Who are you? So I, my name is Ravin Sharma, and um, I've been in the software and analytics space for about 20 years. And um, a lot of the focus of what I've had to do in various roles has been on coming up with 
compelling use cases so people actually use the systems and use the software. So this is just another exercise in, in that kind of continuum. And um, one of the things that struck me uh, last night, <clears throat> besides all, all the wine that we had, <laughs> was um, the image of if you build it, they will come. And I think we're going to have a bit of a discussion on that. And that's, that's a noble statement. I think when you look at it from the perspective of user adoption and users, what we really want are season's ticket holders, not just people who come to one or two games. And so how do you get people to use the system and stay with the system to help it solve, uh, to solve problems? So really, the focus, as, as, uh, as, as Jan Willem said, is on the users. So first of all is who are your users? You know, are they bioinformaticians who just want to get the data, extract it, and start running our algorithms and, and all their analytics and programming? <clears throat> are they power users who can do magic with the system, like our friend Paul Avilac from, uh, from the keynote yesterday is doing amazing things? Or are they more users who this is really to assist them in their workflow? So then the question is, how do you embed or how do you make Transmart part of their workflow? And there's several, there's several experiences there that, that we can talk about. Um, so really, it, the focus is on deriving value from the system. And another kind of guiding principle as well is the, the clarity of the objectives of the project. So you can't be all things to all people and do everything well. So when you're picking a project to start with, you know, like one of your two, two, uh, two pro, uh, POCs, what is the mission of that project? And you got to keep that goal in mind because you're going to run into obstacles and you're going to have to ask yourself, well, is, is the obstacle I run into worth solving somehow so that I can get to my goal? Or if it's not mission oriented or if it's not a high value enough goal, you might run into that obstacle and just exit the system and not come back to it. So we've got a lot of uh, learnings along those lines. So should I pass it on? And yeah, no, maybe can I ask one follow-up question? Sure. So how, how many uh, users do you already oh. support? So how many scientists are really using uh, Transmart from a day-to-day -day basis in the installations that you support? Eh? So, so uh, that's a great question. So we've done about um, 15 to 20 projects on Transmart of varying size and varying complexity. And what we typically find is there's uh, one or two superstars from a, from a user basis who really can formulate these complex translational research questions. Then what we find is there's one or two um, programmer, programmers who want to extract the data and do deep, uh, deep analysis using basically programming languages. And then we find that there's um, a group of users that Sometimes it's hard to onboard. So you have to use various techniques. You have to show how the software can help them do their job. And then another angle to it as well is by embedding Transmart in their workflow or essentially having Transmart be the gateway to the data that they need. So there's no other option. They have to use Transmart. And then you start adoption, see adoption creep up, and then you see the, uh, the, the functionality actually be being uh, evolved to enable those users to, to effectively use the system. Thanks. So, YK, can you? I think you, you have your own mic, huh, don't you? Oh, can I use this one? Eh? So. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm Ike, so I from foundation, but also uh, my day job is at uh, Imperial College. And also with Jay together, we run the eTrix project. So my deployment experience and uh, really is to do always with the projects we support on eTrix. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, one particular project I think I was uh, 
have about five years experience now is the UBI project, right? So that project was the first adoption of Transmart in, in Europe and uh, in the EU project and really use it. And this leading to the later, we adopted the Transmart for uh, all our my projects, which is Etrix project development. So I quite agree with uh, Ravine's uh, point about uh, the key is to really demonstrate you can attract values out of the system. But really, the, also I really agree with uh, the observation when you're talking about the user transmart, yeah, I really have a different people, have a different view on it. So I actually have quite a lot of experience on dealing with different views. So in my way is if you're really talking about deployment, talking about uh, uh, the attraction, you come from these three dimensions, right? One is the number of the users, which is a, in my case, the projects, as well as the pro within the projects institutions. And then now you look, look at within institutions, you're talking about the different roles, right? By informaticians or one, principal investigator is the one. And uh, the other one is uh, another dimension is the number of the people in each role. And you really play the three, three games. And I think you by Prada is a very interesting example, right? We, when we started to use you, um, Transmart in the UBI Pred, which is with the help of Eric, when he was still actually in the Youngson, not even in the FDA. And, uh, he, and we work with him together to set up the Transmart, start loading the data. That's such an easy one because I'm the bioinformatician in this project anyway, so I take it, there's no barrier. So we actually enjoyed ourselves, right? So it's good. But the, really, the Transmart get the really attraction by the UBAP Pred in the 2010 is really the development of the called knowledge portal. And at that time, I forgot what we, we, we called the what, uh, analytical registry, I think. So that was actually a very interesting experience. So we're developing something around the Transmart to help the uh, investigator, PI, to register their analytical activities. No. Register how actually they generate hypothesis, why they generate hypothesis, who actually generated, it. And, uh, you know, we demonstrated this one in the Amsterdam as well as in the Michigan uh, a couple of years ago, right? So it's called Knowledge Report at the moment. So that was actually the way, very interesting. So this is we're hiding a lot of the complexity of the transmat and I use this thing. This is actually make uh, one person extremely happy, which is the PI of the project, which is Peter, Peter Stead. I think this is a, is a crucial moment because he can actually say, he, um, this guy is quite uh, a little bit of dictator. So they say, you can only publish paper if your hypothesis was registered in the analytical registry. No matter how many people follow him or not, but this command generate a lot of attention. And this was the point of time people pay a lot of attention to it. So that's given me a really a good lesson. So basically, if you really got to do this thing work, you have to address the different need of different people. For the PI, why he like this? Because this make him to report to the European Union extremely easy. Because you see every day how many activities happening and who generate hypothesis and who it's, and also make the paper, when you publish a paper, who will be the first author? The order become easy too because your contribution was actually listed there very much. That's not too much to do with transmart. But however, this actually bring you, people immediately realize, register their data. If you register an analytics, right? the first thing you do is you register your data. This make this kind of feeling happens. So that was 2010, which is the time Transmart get really pushed into the project. And uh, I really do think now, that's why the knowledge management, that's, if you look carefully, the eTrix not even called the data management, it's called the knowledge management service. So I think it's really the 
you know, this lesson I learned. I think that when you really build a system, you gotta really think about it. So from an end user point of view, what's the value to him the most? But also, another experience we had to learn is that you, you actually, some success is your, your, your worst enemy. So in the period of the U by Pred, I think in the 2011 and 2012, I attended a lot of the meeting. At the time, Anthony was still working with me, and he was mainly my representative of the meeting. His job to explain to everyone is not Transmart, what Transmart can do. He explained to people, this is not a Transmart job. I think that's actually quite important, because with a lot of clinical scientists, they really want to press, press the button, you, you, you get a drug or you get a, a therapeutic uh, proposals and you got all the results you want. You can generate your paper from for nature. That's not going to work. But this is a very interesting. So for example, uh, when we're talking about uh, really generated uh, the hand, handprint, so that was basically multiple biomarker come together to form a really a portfolio of the really the biomarker um, uh, sort of the um, proposal and also the analysis. And in this case, really, what you think about is transmitter should provide the direct result of it. So, yeah. and, and when you look at the current situation in Etrix, eh, so how many projects uh, are you supporting? How many users? I, I leave it to the PI. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think we support six already. I, I yeah. thought you were still the PI. Yeah, I've got to leave some Okay, for you. Jay? Six. Yeah, six. six. Uh, I'm Jay Bergeron. I from Pfizer. Is, is your microphone working? No. no. Yeah. Yeah. All right. How's that? Jay Bergeron, Pfizer. I used to be a software developer, and now I do predominantly email. Um, <laughs> it's true. Um, I'm responsible for systems for clinical research and precision medicine. Uh, a couple years ago, we had a hunch, and this is my boss, Christoph Brockel, who was part of the foundation, moved on to another role. Really had a hunch that translation, translational research is gonna be important. We're gonna have to be dealing with these data sets though we had absolutely no demand. And we gravitated to Transmart because of Etrix, because of Trait, because of what we saw was, was the real potential for a community. Uh, one of the first things we did, because we had no demand, was to put in genome-wide association studies, which there was an interest in. And we could have built this separately, but what we decided to do was essentially artificially create demand for, for Transmart. And uh, basically, we've done that, and there's a number of people who use that on a day-to-day -day basis, but an interesting thing happened. So we use recombinant. So I think first, first and foremost, if you're struggling with deploying this application, you have an entire community that can help you. And I think one of the most important things that you can do is, is get help, and that's what we did. So within a week, we had instances up and running. Within two months, we had data sets in and we're starting on a development program, and you can do that. So I've talked to people who are sitting here for like six months trying to get Transmart to work. Well, that really shouldn't happen. And we did this with Etrix, and actually it's a disappointment in Etrix. There's gotta be something that, it's a community, right? There's gotta be something you can barter, whether it's cash or something else, to, to get in and get in quickly. Uh, we currently have about, so the first year, we had a really nice success story that was COPD. Again, no demand, but when we put out this application, someone came to me and said, I got 50 spreadsheets. It's taking me an hour to do anything with them, or, or a day to do anything with them. Put them all in Transmart with the help of a competent, and all of a sudden, he can get queries back on these data sets, generate hypothesis in a couple minutes. And he goes running around the company touting Transmart. The next year, we had our neurosciences people, and we had ADNI and PPMI and track TBI. And our neuroscience person went around the company touting Transmart. And this year, we've spent so much time trying to integrate 1.2 and make that available. The thing that I'm really concerned about, both internally, and I think to some extent with, with I think internally with Etrix, and maybe it also resonates with other in the others in the foundation, and I think one of the issues of trying to make this work is if you're spending, when you spend all your time accumulating and compiling branches together, 
you're losing that contact with your customer. Mm. And I think internally we, we've lost a little bit of that contact with our customer. As an IT guy, that's, that's, that's really concerning to me. I think it's happened in Etrix as well. And it's something that this 1.2 on, my job, my goal, is to make sure that to refresh and rebuild those relationships with customers and really, under, and really chart the next step for what Transmart can be. Mm. And I think that's really important. It's something that we have to consider, I think, as a community when we, when we do this, these, these types of grand development and branch integrations. So and I'll leave it there. Yeah, so, um, yeah, but, yeah, please. Yeah, I really appreciate that comment quite a bit. We've had the same kind of issue here, I think, because, you know, we want to use it more than just develop it. Yeah. And uh, so, I, you know, this is kind of to you guys at Etrix, and I know Michael's here as well, uh, and others. Uh, you know, now that, you know, and I think this is consistent with your philosophy to a certain degree, UK, and, you know, which is now that we have one. So I want, just want to translate what I heard a little bit. Now that we have 1.2, let's really use it, you know, and, and get it out there and focus. And, uh, you know, with, with the partners, whether it's Track TBI or whoever that really care and want to use it and demonstrate its use. I mean, you know, isn't that the opportunity with Etrix now that you have the platform? Don't you have a number of, the Luxembourg guys are a number of driving problems that you're going to put up on the platform and demonstrate its use? I mean, could you tell us a little bit about that? I mean, because yeah. I think that's a path to sustainability, and I think CPMM Trade's got that. And uh, we want to have that in the U.S. I mean, Harvard's got yeah, it with Corey and some others. Yeah, for Etrix, right, I, I, I have a few my view, and then Jay can add on. Um, there are a couple of, uh, when we get, when we spend a lot of the time as well as the resource to bring this 1.2 with a strong belief from each point of view. So in order to have a scalable user base and in order to make a lot of projects use it, you must make the software platform solid. So that is the, really the first. But now, I think as Jay said, we need to really now to use it. So that's why from the Etrix point of view, the, you know, we will have our meeting just in next week. We'll be in Berlin to talking about really the Etrix resource. And a lot of efforts, my personal opinion, will be really pushed into really support projects. And not in the support of the numbers, but also support deep, right? We have Uncle Chuck and we have Abbey Risk and many projects is now in hand. Okay, so one thing which, which is actually very, very important for us is really looking around a couple of issues. Data standard, you know, pre-transmart work, I usually call it. How to put data in ready, so then we can really automate as much as we can the curation process. So that's actually the bottleneck. You put the number, put the data into the system. How to make the more smart. So for this one, we're developing, we presented, Florian presented yesterday, this uh, study repository. So you're staging data, right? So this also comes with my previous view, is uh, you need to tell people the limitation between the Transmart, Transmart's data warehouse. By definition, data warehouse is not a traditional database. You don't load in data every day. So that, you, you just stage it, that we're doing, that's for preparation of the scale up. The second one we will do, as I said, you need to make a PI happy. So we were staging the system by build this knowledge portal concept in front Transmart. So what we are doing for Etrix is really want to see how we be cleverly make the use of the Transmart become easy. And we can scale, I mean, Etrix is a small project. So we really can compare with the project we are support, but how we make this one more smart. Let me say this, because we, we just had a conversation about open source. I am not an open source aficionado. Right? I am, my job is to deploy technology in a way that makes sense for the, for the company that I work for. And it ultimately comes down to some kind of economic efficiency. And what I said is I am never going back to Pfizer, to my management, and say, we're going, we want to do Transmart because it is open source and because there's some socio-psychological socio value to it. I'm gonna go back to my company because there is an absolute economic efficiency to this. Mm. And I think the content play is one of those, mm. right? If it takes us 
God knows how much, how much time and money to do, add me. Well, imagine if someone, we're happy to do that. And if someone else does Cam D for us, that's, that's the type of efficiency that we need. And that's the type of efficiency that can come out of this community. I think for Etrix, the content play is, is something that's really valuable. I would love to see Etrix be that. Here's the Etrix public server that is a, a core repository for European public scientific content curated, available to everyone. What a great transformative thing that Etrix can do. And Etrix has to be transformative. Yeah. When I go back to work, I need to do operational things on behalf of my customers. But Etrix has to be transformative. If all we do and if all we value ourselves is the number of projects that use Transmart on, you know, by Etrix, then I think fundamentally at the end of five years, regardless of what that number is, we failed. Because we failed to be transformative. Because commercial organizations can do that. Mm. So that's one. I would like to see, let's talk about the, the reason why I asked about barriers, right? Think of, a, think of this, the standard business ecosystem. I hate the word ecosystem. When everyone says ecosystem in a business context, I say, what's your currency in that ecosystem, right? What's that, econ, what's that ecologic energy that's flowing between the, the parts? And, and wait to see if someone can answer that. And if they don't, I know that they're, they're, not, they're not serious about the, about the metaphor. So what I think would be is really interesting to watch, if you look at the, the classic where you have anchors, right, the uh, keystones, right, the, the great company, the, Fi the farmer used to be like this, all right, you got the Pfizer and all these companies kind of stood around it. And now we're breaking it up and everything's smaller. I would love to understand if the value of that expanded, smaller node ecosystem can be valued greater than the classical anchored ecosystem. And I think that would be a great thing to look at. And if that's the case, then it opens up communities like this and the value of communities like this. And I believe that for Transmart. I'm not sure I believe it for every open source community, but I believe that for Transmart. And honestly, for the last two years, I'm willing, I'm willing to stake my job on it. I'm willing to stake my, my reputation on that within the company. Because I think that the efficiencies that we can provide here in things like content, in things like um, and things like collaborative trans, you know, transfer of data are something that's absolutely valued to the company that I work for and, and also for our competitors. It makes our, our, it's going to make our industry better. So, Thank you. So, um, maybe, maybe there are questions in the audience? Yeah. 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 Hello, there we go. So one of the things that I've done is, is walk around the industry talking to people who have deployed Transmart and uh, been working with groups that have deployed Transmart like Orion Bionetworks and others. And the thing I've been struck by is number one, um, you know, Transmart is much like you know, bioinformatics tools were 20 years ago. Um, you know, I have a use for it for a particular purpose. I don't know how to use it when I start. I have to spend a lot of time figuring out how to use it. I do my project, I go away, and I forget how to use it. And I think, you know, we all were impressed with what Paul Aviak has done. And, you know, I think it's, it's really impressive. Um, but I was talking to him in the elevator, and he said that when he first came to Harvard and was setting up Transmart, he was in the office at 8 a.m., he left at midnight, and did that seven days a week. And that's what it took to get there. Um, the other thing I've noticed is when you walk around and talk to translational scientists, people planning, designing, implementing clinical trials using this kind of data, they don't use this. Um, there's, at best, an expert user behind the scenes that uses it on their behalf. The third thing I've noticed is that I've heard, walking around the room today and I've heard leading up to this meeting, all these different groups implementing knowledge portals. And I've, I've at least heard four different groups implementing some sort of, you know, knowledge-based, simplified front end using Transmart as a back end. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think from a, a discussion of deployment, is that something that everybody should be doing, you know, independently and, and uniquely? Or is this a common kind of theme that we need to discuss and think about in reaching, you know, a larger end user base? Mm -hmm. yeah. So I think that, you know, to your point, Jan Willem, with, with users, users, and more users, um, do we have the right stuff to reach them? And if not, you know, what do we focus on in making that happen? 
Yeah, maybe, maybe I can add to that uh, because um, yeah, you made one comment that kind of st struck me. So you said, yeah, so we, we don't reach the, 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 the medical uh, researchers uh, that really are running the clinical trials and the biomarker studies. So that would really be my goal yeah, for, for Transmart uh, because these are the experts in the d disease. Uh, so these are the ones that can come up with the new uh, hypotheses uh, about the disease. And I think Transmart is a tool that really can reach them and can open a bioinformatics results for this group. Huh? So uh, I was wondering how the, how the others think about this. Uh, who wants to comment? Huh? I think when you said, Keith, like, should, is everybody, should everybody put a knowledge portal on top of Transmart? The image that struck me right away is Transmart is middleware for translational research. So it, it's the wiring in between. It, it applies intelligence to bring data sets together. But then I think as a community, we've been talking a lot about enabling a lot of APIs. So then you can put your favorite knowledge portal on it. You can connect it to other systems. It can be a more effective way to do system integration for translational research within organizations. So I think that strikes me as an obvious way to proceed. You know, and if one portal emerges over others, well, I don't think that should be a goal from the outset. That'll be a, an effect of what happens because everybody's got their own knowledge portal within their organizations. Yeah, from my view, is uh, no surprising. You know, knowledge portal will become the front end of the use of Transmart. And I also agree with you. you. You should not really build a beautiful knowledge portal force people to use it because that's not Transmart main work. And also, different disease field, different application have a very different knowledge management taste. But I think what we can probably well do is we enhance some kind of the facilities, right? For example, you can really, you know, the output of Transmart should be easier and the metadata management of the Transmart could be extended. So therefore, enabling different knowledge portal can be made a bit easier. So the abstraction become important. You look at all the knowledge portal build and think about what key function is needed to enhance a Transmart core. And then also make all this knowledge portal easier to make. That maybe is the area. So that's why you really think about roadmap rather than build a Transmart knowledge portal, but really build a trans Transmart knowledge management support as a layer that will be a very useful thinking on the low map. So let me give you an example. Thomson Reuters and Pfizer curated and loaded ADNI data to Transmart last year. The cost was 25% and the time was 16% of what we, Pfizer, had valued two years earlier of what it would take to get that data in and get it exposed in a way that someone other than a statistician whose job it was to, to crunch data could have access to that data. I honestly don't care if there's one person in that neuroscience group who is brokering all the requests for the rest of our research unit, or there are five, or there are 10, or there are 20. There are different ways to value this. And I don't think Transmart in our world is ever going to be 3,000 people using it. They're very specific people with very specific roles doing something very specific and very, very specific um, value propositions for the company. And I don't see anything wrong with that, at least in our organization, that's the way it's gonna be. There are different ways to value how, how this, this application will impact. And the number of users is only one way. Mm. And I'm not sure that's, the, that's necessarily the most effective value metric that we can that at least in the, in the organization that I work for is not the effective value metric that we'd put forward. So, so can, can I throw in another question? Uh, um, so one of the things we are, um, uh, we are struggling with is how to organize the user support. Huh? So Transmart is not a, an easy tool to use, um, but it is, is a very powerful tool. But clearly you need to have uh, some support when you want to reach out to uh, the non-experts. So how did you organize that? I think Transmart's pretty easy to use. <laughs> really? Look, we said we had no demand. That means we had no requirements when we started this. We had a hunch that people were gonna need to use this. We didn't go out to our user community and say, what do you need from a translational research system? When people came to us finally with a, 
with a bunch of spreadsheets and said, this is what we have for you. Let's make it work. And that's, look, I'm not a proponent that that's the right way to do things. It's just the way that things emerged with, for this application in our environment. And I don't think it's difficult to use. I, it, look, it took me a while to get over this faceted search trying to figure out, oh, this is about cohort selection. But, but honestly, it's a pretty nice model. And, and I, I really get concerned every time I hear someone say, well, this system is really hard to use or the interface isn't good. I, 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 I kind of get, I think we have, a, it, it, it's about a change management process with this system because I think a lot of times I hear these things for people who have just resistance in general or have some other pet option. And I, th I think it's less to do with the application. I think it's more to do with, with trying to get the message out and getting and doing really robust, appropriate change management to get people using the system, which honestly I think is pretty damn feature rich. Yeah. One of the others still want to comment on that? On that huh? I think is a chance model really to talk about usage. One thing is the really the build contents need to be easier, right? And the use is really depends on your expertise. It's uh, for informatician, it's really easy to use. Uh, and for medical scientists, they're not used this way anyway. So you need a, a different uh, platform to support them. But that's not means the system's hard to use. It just means you need additional uh, tools to meet their purpose. Right? And they are generate the papers. They are more interesting on this rather than too much on you know browsing the cohort. So that is a different game. But I think really the really lot of support I can see is curation. You know, and uh, if you look at the Etrix manpower distribution, curation is really starting to be a bottleneck. So that is something we need to improve. So thanks. I have, a, I have a quick comment um, of somebody who keeps building software companies. Um, I think everybody today is so busy, especially within pharmaceutical companies, and they don't have time to keep um, learning new platforms. So I know for us, um, we actually support a lot of in internal instances as well as Transmart within companies. So we do all the training, we do the training materials for them, we do the support for them, we give them a Zendesk email, they send bug reports to us. Um, if anybody needs help loading a data set, understanding a data set, asking a question, and that we could do 100% full support on Transmart for them. Yeah, I would also say to, to Jay's point, there is, you know, there, there's a, there is a barrier. You have to be committed. You have to get your, spend a bit of time to get your head around the paradigm of how to use Transmart. And I think some folks are committed to that because they see that this is a primary way to answer their questions or do efficient queries across data sets. And then to what you just spoke about, there is a need for some supporting material. So, you know, a little, little neat trick we've done in a lot of places is to create a, a mini poster which is essentially a step-by-step -step walkthrough of an analysis. So it shows you what the end goal is if you click the right buttons so that you can kind of inherently see that you're on a path to get an answer. And I think a little bit of that goes a long way with supporting end users to try and get adoption to this. Yeah, I, I've been doing this for a while in terms of starting with I2B2 and things that have the exact same yeah. user model. And having watched it, I think the conclusion that's come out of some sites that have had a lot of success has been that the end user we think is the end user is not the end user. The person who's using I2B2 and Transmart at a lot of the sites that I've seen work is a data analyst who's supporting the end scientist. As much as we'd love to say the end scientist can just do self-service, it's an option we're providing, but it's a huge leap to expect someone to run into an interface, project. understand a complex data set, they never had you know, any activity in sourcing, go and translate it, do, do a query themselves, get result and trust the result. They're gonna talk to a concierge, an honest broker, a person who knows the system well, and until we start building the user workflow and expectation to look more like they submit a data request to the help desk, the concierge goes and tries to interpret it. They see if they have the data sets they need or not. They add the data sets if they need to. They don't, they run the request, they send it back, and they may even do it on a shared screen with the client 
to say, look, if you want to modify your query, here's the tool to modify it, and you're done. And so I think we're spending a lot of time perfecting an interface for a user that doesn't exist, and we will never make them happy. I, I, I want to I chime in on this for a second. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I think what you said is absolutely right. If, if, you're, if you're implementing Transmart at an enterprise level, like what we're trying to do over here at Michigan, and the guys are sitting over there, you know, they're taking notes. They've been here the whole time. We're talking about putting oh, this against I gotta be the careful whole what I say now. Okay? And, you know, I opened the Honest Broker <laughs> office years ago. It's working, this concierge service. Uh, I'll get in more lessons learned from I2B2 in a minute, but I think what you just said had a lot of wisdom associated to it, at least when we're thinking about enterprise uh, applications. So I just want to hold that thought for the roadmap discussion. I really appreciate the comment you just made. Um, well, I would like to add that um, given specific parameters, I do think that it's possible for um, also less data savvy users to work with Transmart. I mean, if, if I look at the, um, the trainings that we do, for example, in pharma companies, um, you load specific data sets. So there's one example where, where um, we provided preclinical research for the first time with actual um, access to clinical trials. And that was really an eye open for them. And they had in mind, uh, certainly, the type of analysis they wanted to run. And Transmart just enabled them to, um, to do that themselves. But yes, there is a lot of limitations around it because um, you have to um, hand it to them on a platter, basically. So load the study that they know, um, sort, uh, already pre-sort on the use cases that they want to see. And then I think it is possible. I think we are close to uh, to wrapping up. But I saw, no, we are okay. Yeah, yeah. okay. Thank you. So um, I, I think there's really I think the um, we talk about one use. We always say users, 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 but actually there's not one type of users. And I think um, Jay's um, you know success story from Pfizer, I think just sort of struck to me. We've been talking about all the you know, fancy functionalities, what Transmart can do, can really mash up clinical with research, high dimensional with clinical, all those things. I have to say, PPMI, ADNI data, there's no high dimensional data to begin with. It really just allowed scientists say, I have 75 sheets of Excel sheets and I don't know how to manage. So I think when we talk to users, we really just have to um, understand what their needs are in the go to where their level, meet them out where they are, rather than having this preconceived you know, fantasy notion, say Transmart's capabilities is exponential, is really great. I mean, then you really confuse them in a way. I think it's just really gradual. And in, on the other hand, the expert users, then you, you can have to identify the, what their pain points are and address their issues. I think it's really targeted rather than you know, uh, lump sum altogether. Yeah, I, th I think we can uh, go on from this uh, discussion for a couple of hours, but uh, uh, I see some people were looking at their watches, so I guess we need to wrap up. Huh? Um, so I would like to thank the, the panelists uh, for their uh, contribution and, and everyone who uh, participated in the discussion. It certainly helped me uh, to, uh, to get a few more ideas how to approach it uh, within the trade project. So I would like to thank you very much.